Are you guys ready? <laughs> you don't All right, uh, <laughs> me and come to order. We're back in open session. Welcome, everyone. Um, I know we have some exciting presentations to, to hear tonight. Um, you might have to knock a little louder. <laughs> Yes, the meeting, meeting. We are back in open session, and uh, welcome everyone. And um, we just have one quick thing to do before we get to the um, all of the exciting uh, presentations and, and awards. Um, so that is uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? If there's no public comment, then we go right into the superintendent's report. Uh, Martha. Wonderful, and I am excited. I'm going to introduce Christy Mullen, our sister principal at Hauser School, and she's going to introduce our group of students. So it's good to be back and see you guys again here on our home turf here. And um, we're really excited tonight to bring you um, Mr. Jones and many of his students that he's had over the year, some of them over the years, plural. Um, and they're going to share with you some of the work that they've been doing in, in uh, design thinking and circuitry. You guys all have little props, some of them toys, some of them um, prototypes on your desks in front of you, feel free to play around with those, try and figure out what you're looking at, and the kids are going to talk you through some of it in just a minute, but I'd like to introduce Mr. Jones. Thank you. All right, good evening. Um, thank you for allowing this opportunity for our students to kind of share what they've been learning this past school year. Um, you'll hear a kind of a little bit about all of the STEAM classes. So there's basically five classes all together. Uh, so two sections for sixth grade, two different classes for seven, and two for eight. So you'll hear about some broad topics, as uh, Christy already mentioned, such as circuits and programming. And then you'll also hear about some different themes, such as human-centered design and empathy. Okay. So the whole idea is to basically provide a challenge for the students, but to also make it engaging and also to make it accessible, even if it's their first time doing something. So without further ado, I would like to take a little, little bit of time to introduce sixth graders from the Intro to STEAM class, uh, Kira and Emma. Hello. Hey, you already told us your name, <laughs> our name, so, okay. Um, so we were from the uh, Intro to STEAM class, and it was like really fun because like mi uh, mi like he helps us understand and do design, and Mr. Jones is just a great teacher with helping us learn everything. Um, so the first thing we really did was in Intro to STEAM was like make cardboard animals with like, and we had to really think about the process of making them because like we couldn't use glue or tape to make them, so we really had to think about it. Then we also made chairs like that, which was really challenging. Uh, and then, then he talked to. Then we did Tinkercad, which is where you um, make, um, uh, like, you make designs uh, so that you can later 3D print them. Mm -hmm. So then we get to the design thinking process. The design thinking process is where you use empathy to um, solve a problem and to improve the human uh, experience without damaging the earth. That gets us to Kira. Okay. So he introduced the problem to us, and it was to create a game for the blind. So we started out with a more complicated prototype than we would have liked, and that was transportation. So we later changed it because we thought it would be easier for the beginners to, um, to like, if they're just learning Braille, to play. So the, the design of the game is simple. There's a, a board game, and then, so it's cards, so it's a memory game. So there's cards and then there's, uh, there's slots for each card. And above them we have a bar, so they stay in. So on each card there's a braille and then an, an indented letter. So you can, they can kind of feel what it's like and like, like what it actually feels like. So they can see what, what, what it looks like. So um, it's over there by Ms. Cliver and Mr. Hunt. So you guys can pass it around and play with it, I guess. And look at it. <laughs> the um, the like. one Mrs. Kleiber is holding is our revised version, and the one Mr. Hunt is holding is the first one that we actually did. Okay, so the rules of the game are simple. So uh, there's you can play with two players or just one, but it's easier with two, I think. There's 16 cards, and so the first player, they run their finger over the cards lightly so they can kind of get a feel of where everything is. Then one player says, find A, and so they say, oh, I think, I remember feeling A was number three. But since they can't touch the cards, they can use the bars above them to feel which one is the third one. So they can say, oh, this is one, two, three. And then they can take out the cards in the slot and see if it's right. If they're right, they can keep it. If they're wrong, they put it back. 
so this keeps on going until every 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 car is gone. Uh, and then. So yeah, the design thinking process will later help us in life to create better things and more complicated things if we continue into engineering. It'll help us with. The, it'll help. Um, <laughs> it'll help the people around us, and it'll pro uh, hopefully help um, improve the overall human experience for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so next we're going to have seventh grade, so we're going to have four students. Uh, first we're going to have Vera and Kate, and that'll be followed by Max and Sam. So I'm Kate. I'm Vera. Um, we were in the seventh grade STEAM design class. Um, and the project that we're going to be talking about is basically our final project. We sort of did a test project after that, but we built houses using 3D design. So um, the prompt for this project was that we were supposed to figure out how to build a house and well, you, through Tinkercad, which is the 3D design pro program, and it had to be able to withstand a certain natural disaster. So the natural disaster that we chose was earthquakes because they seem to happen a lot in different regions around the country. And our location was Baja, California, which is sort of Mexico and sort of California. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's sort of, it's around there. Um, <laughs> so um, we, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we sort of had to come up with different, we sort of had to research and come up with different ways that we could figure out how to build the house that would be able to not, to withstand an earthquake, but would not just sort of get the house through it, but also would be able to protect the stuff inside of it and protect a family that would be in it. So that way you don't have to do a bunch of reconstruction and building on the house. Yeah, so throughout the project, we use the engineering design process, which Kira and Emma already kind of touched on. But what was really important was how we, um, like, we researched, uh, sorry, we researched and we really focused on empathy and focusing on who will be, um, who is this really going to be impacting? And we kind of focused on the people who really get um, impacted by the earthquakes, which are in the California regions in Mexico on earthquake lines and how it can really um, impact their homes and um, their like livelihood. Yeah, so then adding on to the engineering design process, we also had to use the design thinking process, which like sort of directly related to empathy. So through building a website where we had to describe what we were working on, we sort of talked about like what exactly the empathy that we were using was because we wanted to build a house that would work for families so that way larger amounts of people could use it. And we wanted to make sure that different families would feel safe in what we were building. So we also wanted it to be satisfiable for the people living in the area. So we had to design it so it would fit different houses that looked like that. So if you look over there, it's, it's the yeah. red. <laughs> so it has like a Spanish style roof and it has like an outdoor courtyard, which is like inside of the house, which you can see a lot in that sort of area, which you can sort of pass around. <laughs> yeah, we really focused on the Spanish architecture and now we're going to move on to a little bit on the perseverance and problem solving that was like necessary in the engineering design process and design thinking because okay so one specific thing was the measurements of the house and that was really challenging for us since it was very exact and we had to be very meticulous so we really worked hard to persevere because at first the measurements weren't working exactly so we had to kind of adjust them and keep on moving forward which is really important um, in life too to like keep moving forward and persevere yeah so that way we were like mr jones kept encouraging us not to give up because yeah. a lot of times we had no idea what we were doing <laughs> yeah um, and then 
Similarly, in the same class, Max and Sam built a house too, which I'm not sure where it is. Yeah. Uh, yes, that would be it. Yeah. Um, and they sort of did the same sort of prompt, but I'm not sure if they used the same natural disaster as we did. Yeah, their project was a bit different. It was a little different. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Sam Shelvin. And I'm Max Visionis. And we took Mr. Jones' seventh grade uh, steam design class. And for our prompt, we had to design a boat to sell to a company, a made up company called Blue Waters. And um, we had to make our boat, you know, something that is appealing to people who want to buy it and uh, actually like functions the way that a balloon powered boat would. So I thought this was, this prompt was kind of difficult and it needed a lot of problem solving because not only did we have to make a boat that could actually be balloon powered, but we also had to make it appealing and something a company would want to buy. And so this benefited me because I thought that it just showed how much like work has to go into making a product and it really like taught me problem solving and like trial and error because our first boat we thought it was appealing but it didn't work. <laughs> so then we made our adjustments and we end up coming up with the final product that's over there. It's the boat right, yeah, right there, that's it. So that one's our final product. We had to stretch it out so it could actually have like a nice surface area so it could go across the water nicely. And the other one, the one... Uh, the other one right there? Mm-hmm. That one was our first prototype, and that one didn't. It just rolled over as soon as we had it in the water. So, so these actually, these actually work, actually? Yeah. And you put a balloon on the top? Yeah. Yes. There's an example of something in the balloon here. So the air... So we had to use the design thinking process to, we had to research pictures on the internet and see different details of like, oh, um, a shark, like we have to put the fins in each spot, so, and like the gills just for detail to make it more appealing to people who are gonna buy it, like consumers. And we also had to make it function properly, which we also had to research with like um, the stableness and like, how aerodynamic it is when it goes through the water. Uh, some of our other classmates, Kate and Vera, also made a boat, which are right there. And I thought theirs was very cool because it has a lot of detail. And yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Last but not least, for seventh grade, we have Patrick. He's going to talk to us about the circuits class. Hello everybody, as Mr. Jones mentioned, I'm Patrick Hart and, I'm going, and I took the seventh grade STEAM circuits class. So in the beginning, we really started, started out with the basics. We just started learning on the things we need to know for circuits such as Ohm's law, which is the relativity between current, voltage, and resistance. And we also learned about certain prototypes and microcontrollers such as Arduino Uno and Raspberry Pi. And later, we got on to start learning um, how to build certain circuits, like the series circuit, which we have by Mr. Barsadi. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Okay. Um, and if you press the power button on the computer, and you press both buttons, both, both buttons on the controller. Oh. <laughs> right there. Sorry. Yes, right there. Thank you. So it will light up. And we also did work with some code blocks where we, where as a class we were able to build our own individual animals, which you can see by Mr. Miller, um, the panda that seems to be rolling over. So <laughs> <laughs> that was my own creation. And it was really, a, it was a class where you had to pay attention. And there, it was a lot of perseverance, but with the help of Mr. Jones, he was able to um, supply us with the tools we needed to work with it and we really were able to get a full handle on 
not just circuits, but also coding. And because of this, we can apply this to our regular day life, whether it's just not with like even just having an engineering job, but maybe just you want to code something on your own, like how we learn C, C plus or C plus plus, sorry. Or you can actually just do it as a job. And that's what the greatest thing about um, circuits was, because you just learn so much more than what you apply to a career. You can apply it to just having just fun. Thank you. All right, next up is eighth grade. Uh, we have Cole and Jake. They were partners together for the STEAM Entrepreneur class, and Jake also took STEAM too. Okay. Uh, as Mr. Jones said, I'm Jake O'Brien, and I'm Cole Bleppel. And uh, we took the STEAM Entrepreneur class. It was the whole thing of kind of making a product, try showing it to clients, and uh, really uh, revising your your product to make it sellable. So we first um, started out with um, creating our like, personas and backgrounds for creating this company um, by um, looking at different colleges and essentially creating um, a, a story of uh, what college we chose and why and then using that to create a resume for ourselves um, so that we could be hired by our own company that we created. <laughs> And uh, we also made a LinkedIn profile, and we we uh, showed our skills, and uh, and we kind of played off with that our own company, and uh, showed other clients. Like for example, Miss Ferguson, we uh, showed her our old products, which were more of board game type things, and we kind of made something of her problems or like what her students problems and we ended up making a like a bow comforter because like it could be uncomfortable holding a bow and we the we want to keep the certain joints in the right place to keep that good good form for playing when we spoke to Miss Ferguson, the problem that she presented us with is that when learning to hold the bow, you're supposed to hold it in a very specific way. I can't emulate it very well, but then she was supposed to hold something like this. But it's rather uncomfortable that I have to hold something like that. And most people's, um, when they're learning, their pinky will fall down like this. So we were um, told to make something that would help hold that up while people are learning how to play the violin. Uh, and we would go through processes and of showing her and she making changes about about the bow comforter and we would try to manipulate that in Tinkercad which was uh, the 3D design app that we had on our Chromebooks and we ended up trying to figure out the best the best product to make for it and the most comfortable which could end up being sellable which you know. uh, along the way, we also used and learned a, a lot of important things, such as like working together as a group and having to go back and revise our designs. And we ended up actually taking quite a, a many measurements um, to get that to fit properly on the actual bow itself. And we went. We actually started out with a much larger design that we later um, shrunk down, and simplified into our, our current design. And uh, like taking these this class actually like like has made me have like a passion for doing these kind of things and trying to like do this in a f future career. So and also I took the Steam two class, which we would make we would have a problem and then we would try to create a, a product for it on, along the way. And we had three things. One was like. Uh, making a, uh, I think it was like make for people with hand arthritis, we would make a, a bottle opener like for the water bottles like you have on your desks there. And uh, for the last product, we have uh, for that, that car right there with the balloon, like for a toy for kids and like obviously we have to have needs where it's like small kids, we couldn't have to, to be too small for like chokeable reasons. but. Uh, we just had to make a balloon powered car and make it look visual appealing and make it fun. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, 
And if I could just brag a little bit more on Mr. Jones and, and what his students are doing. Some of you do have assistive openers. They're bottle openers. There's different kinds. There's one. There's another one, and right next to you, Mrs. Murphy, is a little orange one. That's, I believe that's one as well. So, yep, oh, and there's one as well. So, um, Mr. Jones, through some of his contacts outside of school, um, was able to share, was asked to share one of the designs. And uh, the British, am I correct? The British um, Arthritis Foundation has taken one of those designs from our students. We announced this earlier in the year, but I thought it's a good time to share it again. Has um, taken that design and they are going to print out all of those and send them to people in their organization who need that kind of help. So great job, Mr. Jones and all of his students. I have to say, I mean, I'm, I, I'm very impressed by this because, um, you know, it sounds like you're, you're working on real world problems and you're taking it from the sort of design phase to the building and construction phase and, and then you're thinking about products and entrepreneurship. So, I mean, it's like you're covering the whole gambit of things that, you know, most people don't do in middle school. So it's really great that you're, you're thinking about these things. That's really, really good. And I'm very I, impressed. I'd have to say your presentations are very polished too. So when you're you're ready to pitch these products, you guys are good. I just have to say my own daughter was fortunate enough years ago to take Mr. Jones's class, and I've been continually impressed with you, Mr. Jones, and your ability to integrate, you know, different disciplines and critical thinking, and um, even the artistic design of these these objects. And so we're so thankful to have you. Appreciative. Any questions for Hmm. I feel like I've just been educated, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have. <laughs> Super thank you. We knew that the STEAM students were going to come in and do this presentation. We hadn't planned a specific staff recognition event. These things actually came up in the past month, and I, I sit here and think, which comes first, amazing students or amazing teachers and colleagues? And I'm not sure. That's a really um, hard question for us to answer, but we are so fortunate to have both. And tonight I have an opportunity to share some other things that have been going on at Hauser Junior High here in the past month. Um, one is that our we have a brand new chapter of Best Buddies, and we have uh, Caitlin Stabe and Marilla Harrington. And I'm not, did Jen, Jen, not, Jen did make it. Jen's over there. So um, if the three of them would come up, I just want to um, recognize the three of them for their work in starting a new Illinois chapter of Best Buddies, and they received what the the rookie best chapter. Um, why don't you explain it for a minute? That would be great to hear from the three of you. We were shocked just a week and a half ago to get an email from the state director of Best Buddies, who happens to be a Hauser alum himself, Adam. Wilt, Adam Wilt, and he was congratulating us on this award. And I think it's based on um, a, a, they chose a chapter that had significant growth in that first year. We hit the ground running. We've got about 60 members of Best Buddies in our first year. Um, and so he came and presented it. He was it was awesome. He came and presented it to the kiddos at our most recent meeting, and we did our own little friendship walk. And um, we're I, I don't know that we can take very much credit because it's the the students. <laughs> Students that that make the the club. And then we have Mr. Jim Colombo, who received a music educator uh, voted among his peers. And Jim, do you wanna do you wanna explain it? You probably have the the oh. best. <laughs> Brag about yourself here for a minute. <laughs> no, it's um, I was nominated by a couple of uh, teachers in the area. For this, for this award, I guess, and it was um, teachers get nominated and then they're voted on by previous winners. Um, and this year, there were myself and four other uh, people that that won this award in the Chicagoland area. Yeah. So, so congratulations. Thank you. It's just the Walk of Fame. So Lynn Janik gets to come up here. And <laughs> 
literally these all these things were all coming that uh, you know Miss Mullen and Miss May were sending me emails about wonderful things happening at Hauser and I swear every other day there was something um, wonderful happening and then something wonderful happening again and um, Lynn maybe you want to explain this best this is quite an honor and quite an opportunity for an experience for you this summer <laughs> Thank you. So I uh, recently found out that I received a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities to study civil rights um, down in Birmingham for three weeks this summer. So we do a civil rights unit uh, with the ninth grade curriculum, which is what we use for eighth advanced. So um, I, there are teachers from all over the country going down and there will be some professors leading us and it's I'm kind of geeking out because it's like a three-week field trip, so um, we'll be based in Birmingham, but we'll go around to Montgomery and Selma and several museums. Um, I'm pretty excited about the um, Southern Poverty Law Center and uh, Teaching Tolerance. Uh, we'll meet some staff there, and then um, the Equal Justice Initiative Memorial, Rosa Parks Museum, so on and so forth. So. Thanks, Meryl. I really wanted to say that. <laughs> uh, I, I think 15. I'm yeah. not entirely certain. So. Thank you. So congratulations. And then Mr. Jones, you've had an opportunity to hear from, but uh, Mr. Jones was selected to be on the, the 2018 Tinkercad advisory team made up of 40 educators and students from around the globe. And Mr. Jones, I don't know if you want to come up and share a little bit more about that. <laughs> Your students obviously love the work you're doing with them, so one more um, honor and kudos to you. So, um, so basically this past summer I was at McCormick Place um, and I was presenting there on behalf of ISTE and um, the STEM organization there. Um, and during that time there at the conference, um, I met up with Autodesk, and Autodesk is the company that, that owns Tinkercad. Um, and I had been kind of sharing stuff online for a long time. It was the first time I kind of met them face to face. And, and then they were so excited to actually kind of make the connection between someone they always kind of saw online and in person, um, as they gave me the furniture that I have up in my classroom right now, which is basically those uh, whiteboard tables and different cubicles. Um, so basically I was really excited. And then I called to make sure we could accept it. <laughs> uh, so once I got the okay, I told them and gave them the address and they delivered it later on in the week, which was pretty cool. Um, and from there, they told me that they were developing this uh, program so they can kind of help better develop uh, Tinkercad and to provide better resources for educators and students. Um, so they asked me to go ahead and apply, and then I did over the summer, and then I found out it was accepted. And so it's been a pretty awesome experience. We have uh, conference calls um, through video probably every two months or so. Um, and we get a chance to get a sneak peek at some features before everybody else. Um, and then we get to offer suggestions and basically share that out. And they kind of promote the tutorials and ideas that we have. Um, and then basically it's kind of just kind of a unique opportunity to kind of get to you know other people who basically work all around the world. I mean, there's people in Hawaii, people over in Europe. It's just been a really uh, a fun opportunity. And there's actually two students, two high school students who were accepted as well too, who are doing some pretty amazing things. So yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And thanks to all the students that have joined us tonight and all of our teachers and staff members. And really thanks to the Board of Education for supporting these great activities and events and great people and doing um, great things with their profession and their, um, their greatest craft. So thank you all very much. Moving on to more exciting um, information. <laughs> um, I did want to share with the Board of Education, with the public, that as you know, we've been sort of uh, adjusting our before and after care program. We are doing so half you can't feel oh. free to leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the rest of board <laughs> business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You thought they were staying for that. I just, I, I did just want to share that we, um, we've made an adjustment with our Riverside Parks and Recreation that they will be running all of our before and after care programs at the four elementary schools next year, and that's been a slow transition in working with uh, PAV YMCA, and they've done a wonderful job. It's just uh, having an opportunity to work with our community partner is something that we are excited to do in the, the, in the year ahead and moving forward from there. So. Um, also just wanted to make one other just recognition announcement, and that was that uh, District 96 was named by um, 
our uh, our insurance provider essentially is one of the healthiest companies in America by Interactive Health. Um, maybe it's a small pool, but actually it's something. <laughs> um, we had 70% participation in a wellness screening last April, and our overall health risk was low based on the results of the screening. So it wasn't just participation, it was actually that the results were very positive. So um, that's really a special thanks to Donna McLaughlin, who goes out of her way to organize a really um, thoughtful event, well-organized event, and really encouraging participation. So I wanted to share that with all of you as well. So all good news um, tonight. So thanks for letting me share all of that. Thanks, Martha. Any comments on the questions about this? Uh, I'm very happy to hear about both things, that we have a healthy workforce and that we have, uh, <laughs> and that the Riverside is going to take over the um, yeah. parks, or be the uh, after school thing. I think yeah, that's great, that's great, uh, great news. Um, next item is the uh, consent agenda. Um, uh, at this point, would the board secretary like to read the consent agenda? Yes, tonight's consent agenda includes minutes of the previous minute uh, meetings, the closed session on March 20th, the regular business meeting on the 20th, the closed session on April 3rd, uh, two sets of minutes, one after, one before, minutes of the special board meeting on April 3rd, then the personnel report the payables pre-lists of March 2019 and April 17th. And then we get to policies. This includes the Press 100 update memo. Uh, policies in the five-year status review were 2 colon 40, board member qualifications, 2 colon 50, board member term of office, 2 colon 60, board member removal from office, uh, 6 colon 65, student social and emotional growth, and 7 colon 185, teen dating violence prohibited. And then there were others, others up for review. This included 2 colon 20, powers and duties of the Board of Education and indemnification, 4 colon 100, insurance management, 4 colon 110, transportation, 4 colon 150 facility management and building programs 4 colon 160 environmental quality of buildings and grounds 5 colon 330 sick days vacation holidays and leaves and finally 6 colon 15 school accountability thanks Joel um, are there any items that any board member would like to have taken off of the agenda for further discussion uh, if not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Uh, Marjorie, please call the roll. Mr. Hunt? Aye. Ms. Murphy? Aye. Mr. Marhol? Aye. Ms. Kleiber? Aye. Mr. Barsati? Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. Motion carried. Thanks, Marjorie. I'd just like to note that all of in the um, personnel report, um, there's the approval and renewal of all of our administrator contracts uh, for the next year. Um, the standard raise for these contracts was 3%, and uh, there is a, um, uh, two principals and, and our uh, assistant principal, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gatz, uh, Ms. May, and uh, uh, Ms. Mullins are receiving a one-time uh, merit bonus of $2,500 in the case of the two principals and $1,500 in the case of the assistant principals for their, um, uh, for their efforts to improve student achievement at their schools. Um, so with that noted, um, we next move on to the Riverside Education Council. Are there any comments from the Riverside Education Council? Uh, if not, we move on to board member comments. Has any board member attended any uh, performances or uh, anything they'd like to talk about recently? Well, I, I, I saw your daughter there. I was at the orchestra concert last night with Ms. Ferguson and the fifth grade teacher as well, and they're tremendous. I mean. I, we've said this before, but when you transition from fifth to junior high, it's it's the fifth graders are amazing in itself. But then when you transition to every day, they're tremendously talented. And our new teacher, Miss Ferguson, is a tremendous hire. So I was really impressed I, with them. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I saw my daughter is very sad to be moving on, happy but sad at the same right. time. But she's wonderful. At the uh, yeah. at the co the co chamber uh, orchestra concert, the yes. library and the uh -huh. choir concert, the yes, library last Sunday. Yes, and the chamber Sunday, one was great. Uh, yeah. Where your daughter was performing it was really uh, also excellent. I mean, really, just the, you're right that the change from fifth grade mm -hmm. to middle school is really quite significant. So, and then I think yeah, I agree with you. I've heard really good things about the orchestra program as well. Yeah, I mean, I was there as well. My daughter's in fifth grade, but see her from first 
the beginning of fifth grade. To oh, pass yeah. It to the, now, Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's a very much, much improvement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's their first time. I know right. it's, it's amazing progress. Yeah. So. Any other comments? or? Uh, I'm pretty sure this was a while ago, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Speaking on top of um, the orchestra, I was at a, the symphonic band had a concert over at uh, Riverside Brookfield High School, I probably want to say a month ago. So I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't say it or if I already did say it. Probably, probably but it was such a great event yeah. because they got to perform on at the R, you know, at Arby's Auditorium. Um, the RB band, I'm not, I don't remember which one, performed afterwards while the kids were watching in the audience. Um, and then they, they did some of their solos and uh, solo and ensembles for everybody. So it was, it was a really great performance and it was really nice to see the, um, like the collaboration between the two schools. And I think it was done because the play set was up. Oh. <laughs> and it was very, I think it was difficult to have the concert, but I thought it was a great idea and I hope they yeah. continue because I think the kids enjoy yeah, being yes, able sure, to, sure. you know. Well, since Linda mentioned the uh, the play set, I participated in tearing down the play set. <laughs> uh, I got to explore the bowels and the basements of Hauser Junior High, and it's amazing what's down there. Cool. Uh, those who have seen shows recently, you know, I find little artifacts stashed here and there from several recent performances, some that have been recycled and used again. So well, it was a nice experience to see, and uh, my back still hurts a little bit. <laughs> from what I heard, the play was amazing. And yeah. the set design was yeah, like, yeah, was I don't great. know if you guys, if you didn't get to go to the play, just walk by the set. It was mm -hmm. like <coughs> insane. The sets are always extremely impressive. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, was in, mm -hmm. it was very impressive. Uh, any other comments? I also mentioned the, uh, the symphonic band, uh, regular band, uh, had a performance that did not get to see in person, but was uh, viewable on Facebook Live, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Uh, so that was impressive to see, and, and thank, yeah. thankful for technology that allows things like that these days. <laughs> yeah, I think the wind ensemble just went somewhere this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and did, they did. We, we got a link about that, and then I know the symphonic band went and performed. I wish I knew the name of the competition. I'm sorry, Mr. Combo. Yeah. What? Yeah, and they, I know they got a very high um, rating, so mm -hmm. it's great to hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. Uh, if not, then we move on to the um, uh, committee reports. Um, Rich is not here tonight, so we'll move on to educa education. Sherry, do you have any updates on education? Yeah, committee well, or? I'll just kind of recap what we talked about last time. Um, we heard we heard from Hauser tonight, but we also heard from Ms. May and Ms. Mullen and some of the teachers there about what they're doing to connect um, Hauser students and really build a climate of caring for each student and each student caring about each other and what's happening in their community. And it's really great to see them thinking about not just their studies, but really building friendships and, and long-term health. <laughs> and then the other part was um, instructional technology. We heard from um, Mr. Smith and, and to, uh, Mr. Tufano and Ms. Kelly about kind of where we are, all kinds of things from uh, how we're using iPads, how we're using projectors, what are we changing, and, and also are we, are we aligned, or are we not aligned with our um, strategies. So this is a really good presentation. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it online. So. Thanks, Sherry. And then uh, policy committee is pulling double duty tonight in that we had uh, a number <laughs> of policies approved <laughs> in the consent agenda. So many thanks to the board member for that. One more time. <laughs> it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, let's see. So not a part of the policy committee report exactly, but in new business, I believe we have more policies to discuss that it will be a continuation or part two for those who are impressed with press <laughs> 100 bulletin there's even better ones coming up ahead so okay. we will speak of those when we get to new business okay. thanks dan uh, we next move on to old business uh, the first item in old business is the investigative stu uh, study memorandum of, of understanding for uh, some of the um, construction projects that we've been talking about. So at this point, is there a motion for the Board of Education to approve the investigative study memorandum of understanding as presented? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, is there any discussion or comments on this uh, study? Maybe, maybe Martha, you'd like to just maybe just review for the board and the public uh, what the memorandum is exactly and what the... Uh, what sure. The, uh, so, so this particular study is, is really a modification of what had been referred to as the, the Ames MOU. And really this is a, as you know, all of our projects have become very interrelated. And so um, in working with Ramesh Nair and working with our own director of finance and working with our architecture firm, we decided that 
a valuable and very important next step would be to uh, proceed with all of the necessary investigative studies that would need to be done at any and all of our sites to move any or all of our projects forward. So um, it really becomes a next step in the process. And this is um, something that the board has, not has had an opportunity to look at and discuss in the past. So, I don't know if Ramesh or Jim, you want to add any more to that? Sure. Um, so I think we presented. Uh, oh, I want to make it So in the last couple of weeks, we had presented uh, an agenda which included architectural services. There were various testing agencies we had brought on board as well, including a survey company. Now we believe that by collecting this data, it'll be useful going forward whether we make a decision to go ahead with a design project, construction project, or whether we stop it because of budgetary reasons. But this information will be extremely useful, and if this data is kept in, in an archive, even five years from now, you don't have to repeat the same thing again. It can be used again. So be, the, what, the real plus of this is you're collecting knowledge about your existing buildings, about utilities, about the status, uh, status of environmental conditions, and how the architectural design impacts each of these projects. And it'll help us tighten up the budgets. And we really felt that by having a bucket of monies available, we can approve individual components as needed based on the feedback that we get. For example, when we do some of the tests, there's a possibility that it may have a negative impact there. For example, we do the soils test. If the borers come back and say that there's an issue out here, we may have to authorize an additional test to confirm the negative finding. And it really doesn't behoove us to keep coming back and saying that one more test is going to cost us so much money. So rather than that, we have a bucket of monies available for this, and this will be monitored by our team. We have, you know, so we make sure that we spend the money wisely. That's the important thing out here. And that's what we want to present to the board. So part of, I think, to note is that in addition to the MOU for DLA, this includes the surveys at the rest of the schools plus the soil testing. And the environmental testing as well. Because um, at each of the schools where we have renovation that happens, any all our buildings are over 30 years old, we ha we're going to have issues with regards to lead paint and asbestos. Now, if we had had that data available to us from the past in archives, it would have been really useful because once you identify a wall has lead paint, then there's no need to test it eight more times to come up with the same answer. But this information should be collected and kept in a very safe archive. It's interesting you say that. So would it be possible, um, Martha, for us, for the board, actually to have an update in the future about how the district intends to archive all of the information you're collecting? It sounds like when you're saying some of this stuff should have been archived in the past and maybe it was not. Absolutely, because I know I turned over a whole set of documents in okay. 2012. So we're redoing some, possibly redoing some of the same stuff we did in the yes. past. So, so I would be very interested if, if that we could hear sure. about the exact yeah. plans from what, what, right. what are we going to do to make sure that once this is done, we're done. Right. All the data we get nowadays is electronic. Right. So it's not that something like we had paper archives previously. Right. I mean, blueprints fade. They, dis they disintegrate after a couple of years. So this is all electronics, and I believe that we can carve out a space in your electronic directories, and this data should be readily available for investigation. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. And actually, really, we're talking about sort of three things here. One is the very specific investigative studies MOU with DLA. The other um, that Ramesh is also saying is that there will be things that will now come up, right? And so this idea of whether it's approving a bucket of money, as you say, or approving a specific dollar amount, but there uh, will need to be some authority to, you know, as Ramesh referred to as our team, which is really myself and Jim and Ramesh in terms of reviewing these things as they come up. Um, there will be things that will be outside the context of the, the formal MOU. And then certainly the third thing is digitizing all of the information that now comes to the district and having a way to preserve that in the disease that's easily shareable. Right, and uh, we've given a timeline of approximately <laughs> 60 days for the architect to come up with the investigative studies. And once they finish that, we'll get into, this, uh, into the data and we'll clean up the budgets. We'll start to make the budgets much more accurate and we'll have detail to it which can go forward to bring up the overall budgets for the projects. 
that's the key idea out here. So tonight's motion is, is on this investigative MOU, which I think specifies a total of $78,000, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds like you're talking about something in addition to that. And, and I guess my question, Martha, right. is what is your proposal for that? That additional authority. Huh? What, right. I mean, what do you what do you propose? Right. So the MOU is is for forty six thousand. I just want to clarify That's that. That's right. That's for the architects. Is a lump sum amount for the architects' compensation okay. and that. And then um, the other idea. And, and Ramesh, you had mentioned maybe a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand right. dollars as sort of that money that would be authorized, set aside for all these additional or sort of ancillary. We don't have to do every test, for example, right now. Okay. But to have that bucket of money available is a very useful way of approaching it because some of the tests cost $3,000, but there are some others that cost eight or 10. For example, the survey for Hauser costs almost $15,000 as compared to a survey at Blythe, which is $1,500. Now, surveys, the only problem with surveys is they're not valid in when you go for permitting once you pass six months. They have to be re-stamped. But having that data with you allows the architect to know where the utility is run and how they're going to tie into each of these elements. You need to have that information. And that's what I'm saying. If we had had that previously, yes. we won't have had to do this right now. Right. And I think, so consideration for the board would be something like, up to a dollar amount or a, a general dollar amount, um, you say bucket I of money. A, I right. call the bucket actually it's about 150 is what I believe is what we should look for. Because I mean, right now we have about 78 or 80 thousand identified, but there are other elements, as I said, other additional surveys and okay. tests that'll be five, ten, which will add up. But I believe that bucket is what we should try and approve. And then we could say it would always appear on the next board agenda as an yeah. informational item, or we could email it out directly to the board. I mean, we can come up with agreements for communication and transparency. It's just that there will be some things that to wait two weeks right. or four weeks for board approval would be so problematic. My question is, I'm, I'm, as a, I'm personally, I'm comfortable with that idea. My only question is, uh, as a as sort of a, a technical or a legal matter, do, do, do you need us to officially authorize something, or is it just enough for us to say, okay, and spend it? Or what, I, I know that's the part I'm a little bit fuzzy you, about. It wouldn't need to be a formal agreement in talking okay. with our attorney. It would need to be sort of a, a shared understanding Standing. of the authority that the superintendent, the director of finance has in terms of working on To basically these to get projects, like a, right. to authorize a survey and then to come back next morning and say we, we authorize a survey for this amount of money, but we've already sort of done that. So that, the idea is to make it more efficient. Right. And for example, we have a policy that says when something is over $25,000, it needs to go through a competitive bidding process. Mm -hmm. So it really is likely to be things under $25,000 as single items, but when you look at even that list of all the surveys, it totals $78,550. 46,000 of it is the Ames MOU, but already right there, that's, you know, I would call that a lot of so money. So is this 78,000 a part of the bucket? Yes. Okay. Okay. I have a question. It seems like you'll add more than the 78, obviously, but what happens if after we're finished? If for some reason there's money left in this bucket, what happens to the money? Is it earmarked for a certain purpose or can we reallocate it back to where it goes? It's totally reallocated. Okay. That's there's no reason for us to spend it. Yeah. Right. No, and I wouldn't want you to. <laughs> yeah. It has to go back into the construction the dollars, right. ultimately. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's really just to expedite the agreed upon we need to preparation move. for construction and right. construction because related time projects. is really of the essence right now. If we're trying to meet a fiscal 20 construction deadline, yeah. we can't sit and wait two, four weeks uh -huh. at a time like yeah. this because the architect is just sitting right now doing nothing. Yeah. Right. I mean, so okay. well, let's go around the table. Is everyone comfortable sharing? I think that's efficient and makes sense as long as there's a cap okay. that we agree on. Yeah. I, I did have a question here, and it sounds like it might have just been answered. But uh, no, I, I think it was said that, that some of the information that, that would be gathered in this survey, I think you mentioned that you had transmitted it to the board in 2012, or as recently yes. as 2012, yes. perhaps some earlier, earlier. And I'm wondering. Where is it? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm wondering if we've devoted time to try to find it or if it wasn't I did. findable. Or I did. I did call up okay. Bill Radke's office and he said was, most of it was paper okay. because, you know, I got it from Concert 3, I reviewed it, and I turned it over. And it's obviously the blueprints are disintegrated. You see, mm -hmm. it's not, it was not electronic. It wasn't in the form of a CD that was transferred. So that's what I'm saying. For right now, the information we collect will be electronic. It's available. It will be there for posterity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the data is gone. Okay. And unfortunately, concept three is no longer gone in too. business. Mm -hmm. So I've tried, I mean, tried to make that call too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Well, from you know, with that understanding, then yeah, I, I'm comfortable as well. Yes, comfortable. Comfortable, but with the cons that it will be communicated. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay, so I'm comfortable as well. So it sounds like we're all comfortable with uh, with this scheme. We'll, we'll hear about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Keep us right. closely informed. Of what, Absolutely. If you can't find, you, you'd be able to find things that you know in an old email or something like that. Obviously. Yeah. Well, no, I have my archives yeah. of all the transactional information, but I did transmit all the as bills, unfortunately. I see. Because I didn't ask for an extra copy for me because okay. I had not my, okay. I was not sure what my role was right, right, after right. 20 okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Need a vote on that? Yes. Yeah, so now, um, if there are any other questions on this topic, on the memorandum of understanding? <coughs> uh, if not, then Marge, please call the roll. Ms. Clyver? Aye. Mr. Markle? Aye. Mr. Hunt? Aye. Ms. Murphy? Aye. Mr. Barsotti? Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. Motion carried. Thanks, Margie. Uh, the next item on old business is a, the intergovernmental agreement with the Village Riverside, which, which is the uh, refers to the security camera relay that they uh, intend to put on the uh, smokestack behind Hauser. Uh, so at this point, is there a motion for the Board of Education to approve the intergovernmental agreement with the Village of Riverside regarding the security camera relay as presented? So moved. Second. Um, are there any questions or further discussion about this? I just appreciate the changes that were made that allow us to unilaterally terminate it um, if we decide that it's not right for us or if it's interfering in any way. And thank you for whoever made those changes. Yeah. It was really with input from, from the board from the, and, yeah. and yeah. our the training at the changes yeah. specifically. And also, I think there's the annual review. Was and the review, yeah, that's well. really important. Yeah. Yeah, I concur. Those are both good changes. Any other comments? No, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the changes. I mean, I still don't think, um, as, a, as I think the school board is crossing the line and sort of agreeing by signing this agreement. I mean, it's, it's, it's a proverbial line. It's like, but the school is not designed, is not intended for this. And I guess by signing this agreement, um, we are sort of becoming an active participant in public surveillance. I mean, and so we are essentially telling, and the way I look at it is we're essentially telling students it's okay that you're monitored uh, constantly. And I guess, um, because we're active participants, I mean, there's just, I, 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 even though this I do think is a better agreement than originally, I do feel that we do have sort of an obligation to the community, to our students, because there's never been any talk of like what, um, like the rules or the bylaws or the consequences of misuse of this. I mean, the Urban Institute has come out and publicly stated that anytime these cameras go up, there has to be publicly displayed for effective, like, so it's effective that, um, that they need to publicly say what, um, how this is going to be used, and then also what's the consequences for misuse. Because there's been repeated, um, I mean, the NSA, uh, the Detroit police, the Washington Abuse Police, there have all been documented cases where this is abused. And while I don't think that's going to happen here, but we don't, we don't know because there's nothing in place for that. And so I, I, even though this is a better thing, I don't think, I can't approve it. Um, any other uh, comments or, or, or questions about the agreement? Uh, if not, Marjorie, please call the roll. Mr. Marhol? Abstain. Ms. Murphy? Aye. Mr. Hunt? Aye. Ms. Cliver? I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Mr. Barsotti? Nay. Mr. Miller? Uh, I'll abstain. Well, the majority of two eyes, so it's going to pass. Thanks, Margie. Um, close vote. Um, next item is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if this is as exciting as Gats were. Yeah. <laughs> next item here is um, the uh, new business. Uh, first item on new business is uh, professional development, the Metro Chicago Mathematics Initiative. Uh, I think it's agreement for further uh, coaching. I don't know, Martha, you'd like to be able to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. This is um, Meryl. We're entering into our second or third third year, third year with uh, MCMI um, offering us really what I would call sort of a la carte math coaching for our 
teachers and just because of the the dollar amount so it's a thirty eight thousand dollar proposal um, we really feel that we have seen really nice traction nice opportunities for our staff this is what we call in the field job embedded professional development it's really bringing professional development in a very customized and personalized way to um, teachers who get an opportunity to talk to uh, a consultant a math coach in real time about um, real instruction and the students that they have in front of them on every single day so um, we're excited about it it's it's an opportunity for our staff because of the dollar amount we've set up it's actually a an opportunity for a small number of our staff but um, we keep growing it out each year and so again I want to bring it forward because I think it's it's an important piece of our work um, because it does have a relatively high dollar amount in terms of how our professional development and services go I just want to bring it to the board's attention one more time between five and seven teachers in the last couple of years that we've been working but next year we're going to take more of a team approach and do some fishbowl work and what I mean by fishbowl is teachers will do volunteer, volunteer to do demonstration lessons and then the whole team will observe those lessons and then they'll debrief together so while there will be individual coaching we'll reduce the amount of individual and go more to a team coaching level um, which will allow us to build a little more capacity so we met to kind of flush that out so that we could have that all ready to go for the fall. So we think we're going to be able to touch um, every team um, throughout the year in sort of a cycle, a cyclical way. So we'll coach um, a couple grade levels at trimester. So we're excited about that. Are we just talking about this one person? Correct. We're coming? bringing back the same person. And all right, is that anticipated to be a go, like with the same person? Yes, that okay. yes. So when we met, I requested, because she already has studied up on math and focus yeah. and understands yeah. math and focus, uh -huh. which is also a piece of yes. the strategy coaching. Has she met any of our staff? Yeah, so she, she's been I mean, with... The ones that will be participating now? Or so she's going to... We're going to revisit some of the individual teachers oh, okay. that have okay. been coached with their teams now expanded out to gotcha. team level. So new teachers from the team will be individually coached, but some of those participants will be back. Out. Right. And we do a meeting in the beginning of August to kind of lay out how the program is going okay. to work. And the principals are excited more about the team level approach, too, because we yeah. feel like we can touch more teachers. Thank you. Have you been able to um, sort of measure in any, in any, in any way? It, it's hard to, to be like sort of like yeah. now you've had a coaching and now your students are doing better. I mean, is it, is it's like hard to attach it in this short time frame so far. Um, what I can tell you is the majority of teachers that have been touched individually had stronger performance in MAP data overall and growth data um, for sure. I can tell you also that their own reflections on their ability to meet the needs of their students, particularly in the area of differentiation and really parsing out um, how to push kids who are at the already have mastered skills level as well as the kids who need a, more support in the classroom moving to a more of a center model she's been really effective in helping teachers figure out how to distribute that instruction to meet the needs of all the learners in terms of the teachers she's been working with so um, every teacher that's been coached has thanked us for the opportunity um, to really be able to reflect on that practice and how many days of coaching is it? We get for, 30 days. 30 days. So they, the coach will spend 30 days with um, uh, each mm -hmm. teacher. Well, we hour. split it. So it's 15 and 15. It's 15. every other week. Okay. For 30 weeks. So we split it so we can hit more teachers. I see. Any other questions? Okay. okay. Any other questions? I think I have to stay for one more thing, right? Um, Jim's going to talk oh, about five <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next item is a budget development process. Uh, Mr. Fitton. Thanks. I just wanted to uh, kick off the budget season with um, reminding everybody what the requirements are that we have to hit to have a budget done for next year. And uh, so this is information I got from the Illinois State Board of Education. Um, what I did was take that and kind of put it into my schedule because there's other milestones that we want to include. So tonight, just to talk about the uh, schedule for completing and uh, development of budget, and uh, I wanted to introduce what I see as some of the facility improvements, some of which we'll try to get done this summer. Um, so all these steps will go to uh, towards approving the budget on September 18th, and that has to be 
up, adopted by September 30th and then filed with the state. Uh, there's a few other milestones on here like um, May 15th, I, I hope to have a complete budget together even though it'll just be the first draft uh, that we can take a look at on that board night and then have a couple updates, a uh, tentative budget that we can post and uh, put the ad in the paper and then we should be ready for September 18th. Any questions on the schedule or the requirements for the budget? Uh, just a quick question. So this schedule is the same as all years past? There's right. no significant changes? Yeah, the uh, especially the black letters up there, that's the required by the right, state. Right, right. So The only thing I would point out just because of the transition that we had in the finance office is that I think each individual's done it in terms of just the this, perhaps the style or the, the frequency of bringing information forward. So um, I think this is really valuable to have that timeline. It is absolutely the timeline that is required and allows us to back up and for the board to have all the information you really need to, to get to that approval process right. eventually. Um, and as a piece of the budget is uh, going to be these facility improvements, so mainly maintenance and, and repairs, but these are the requ requests I have. And we... Um, most of them we still need quotes on, but I wanted to make sure you had in your board packet a list of ideas that have been generated. How were the ideas generated, Jim? Is this uh, I meet with the principals once a month and, and with Bill every day, Bill Radke every day. So I just keep track of things. If, if they're minor, we just try and take care of them right away. And I thought the larger ones, that especially that we're going to need quotes on, um, and that would probably be easier to do in the summer, I kept kept on this list. Uh, for the Hauser windows, are we talking all the windows or? What I'd like to do is get a quote for all the ones that should be replaced. I have a feeling that we would have to then spread that out over several summers, <laughs> um, depending on how large that is. So. windows, aren't they? I think they're um, vaguely that they were in the 2000s somehow. Didn't they replace all the windows? In the I, and that's, I, yeah continue to do research and figure this out see if there's manufacturing dates on these because that was a little bit of a surprise yeah i i wanted to i Get wanted to have a place where we capture it sure. um unless we can prove that the money we save on energy you know makes it something we want to accelerate but right i that's i believe we would want to discuss that as it goes on because i'm sure it'll be a big dollar amount any questions on the draft of the facility? All right, uh, any no other questions for Mr. Hood? Just do we know when the quotes will be coming for these? Um, I actually I have a couple that, I, that came in today that I didn't get to add to this, okay. but I'm hoping to have them all within a month. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, that's otherwise they just kind of yeah, I was, pushes. I the, was going to say how long would we push it? Okay. I have a feeling some of these will be on for next summer too. Yeah. So, I, I'm happy to see the Hauser Auditorium lights are on there because those it's, are pretty old. <laughs> it's a dark place at times in that auditorium, <laughs> so it's just nice to see that it's uh, on the list. Please, That's, if you have ideas for that things that should be added, let me know. Is that stage light or is that general light? Uh, it's really stage lighting, all anything yeah. though. Oh, and anything. Okay. That's been talked about for a while. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those yeah. lights. Yeah. What I. Heard. I agree with that. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Th thanks, Mr. Um, uh Next item is uh, consolidated district plan. Sure. And this is Meryl, where you get to come back up and talk about the consolidated district plan. This is a modification of state reporting yeah. that I, the board has to formally approve this. So I wanted to share, make sure. Pam was my sidekick. I right. Give her full right. credit. Right. So Mrs. Shaw and because I it's combining of special That's education right. and so federal. basically the state like has. Pages. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody works on that. Oh my goodness! I'm sorry. It's so tiny. That's the only way to let me print. Um, the state consolidated every um, federal funding source that we receive into one plan document. However. The grants themselves will still be separate um, documents that we will track. So Title I, II, IV, we will not receive Title III again next year, which was the English language learning grant. Um, just based on enrollment, we need 100 students for that one, which we don't have. Um, but Title I, II, IV will still remain separate, as well as separate from the IDA flow through. 
However, the plan itself had to be consolidated so that we were making sure that we were accounting for all equities across all groups as we were planning the dollars out. So Mr. Shaw and I sat together. We're still, um, there may be tweaks to this and modifications as we learn more information from LADSI and sort of what their plans are as well as the money that's coming back to us as they restructure that funding source. But for the most part, we think we have it pretty well outlined. It's not dissimilar from what you've seen in the past. It's just now all in one. So the board used to approve something called the Application for Recognition of Schools. Yeah. This is Title I. Yeah. It, it integrates um, the Interest with Disabilities Education Act grant writing. Right. So it's, it, it still requires board approval before we then get allocated the funding to then go ahead and actually write the grants. Okay. Any other questions for uh, Dr. Brownlow? So you'll see it as a cons as a voting item the next right. meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, Next item is the uh, Village of Riverside's letter to the Illinois Department of Transportation uh, about the intersection at First Avenue and Ridgewood. Um, this is something that um, uh, some members of the community have mentioned, um, and in light of the recent uh, uh, accident where a 11-year-old student, um, after school hours, I think, was crossing First Avenue uh, from uh, the high school side to the riverside and uh, was struck by a car. Fortunately, was not seriously injured. Uh, but uh, we know that's a, a tricky crossing, and uh, there have been a number of incidents over the years. And uh, as a consequence, Chief Weitzel wrote a, a letter to the Department of Transportation asking them to review the safety um, protocols at the intersection and, and see what can be done to improve it. And uh, uh, I know that some of the village representatives are writing a, a letter to, um, in support of Chief Weitzel's um, uh, letter. And given that we have about, I think, 70 students from the Hollywood area, middle school students who cross that intersection daily, plus whatever other number, you know, who happen to do so for other reasons, uh, I was wondering if the board would like to, you know, consider writing a letter of our own in support saying we are the local school district, our school district straddles the First Avenue, we've got students coming and going, and so we would support this effort to improve safety at the intersection. I absolutely yeah. Yeah. support that. Okay. That intersection is dangerous when there's two crossing guards in the morning, let alone yep. after school hours when they're not crossing. Yeah, construction project yeah it's, it's yeah. you know, I would love to even see it go further yep. and, and create, you know, like a pedestrian bridge yes. or, you know, like obviously it's not in my purview or but, <laughs> my authority, but um, I would support cool. even stepping further. And no, I agree. So, so Martha, it sounds like the board is sort of a consensus. Would it be possible for you to write a simple letter to support Chief Weitzel sure. and, and on behalf absolutely. of the board? And yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. And so, just so I'm clear, if you'd like to support the plans that he describes? Um, uh, he, he in general, ideas, sorry, in general, he's asking for the state to an analyze, analyze right. and find good solutions mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. an identified problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always have to, you know, not now that I have a high schooler and I'm more in tune with that side. Uh, our kids are crossing that street for everything, for every, you know, sporting activities. Like all, you know, you see kids coming home from practice at 8 p.m. on their bike. Yes. Either you know, like it, it is a very heavily crossed intersection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not just during school hours, yes. but children at all times. Right. Because the, the high school is a major hub of where every activity is going on. Well, and kids one, are just one other idea that I, I was thinking about in that in that very sure, context sure. is. Um, if you watch, if you watch the video of this this mm -hmm. child crossing the road, uh, I was caught on camera, um, and you see that 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 they were crossing when the light was not telling them to cross. Right, they were crossing. And the road. what I'm wondering is, and I'm not saying that's their fault that kids do stuff that mm -hmm. they right. but should we have a program in the schools of of uh, traffic safety? So very explicitly, you know, um, here, you know, here's what you got to watch out for, and you, you really can't across major roads like this, you know, uh, and, and really just try to drive that home in the context of our school, I don't know, our health programs, or we'd have to get it to the elementary kids, especially, right? Think, right? right. And just hammer home, like, hey, when you're crossing a, a road like this, you have to be super careful, and you have to wait for the light, and you have to, you know, pay attention. I mean, we already do it. Jeff, we, we do that. Yeah. We do that for we do the railroad crossing. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. A similar for yeah. high capacity highways. Right. Right. We are required to have like a walk. 
walk to school and bike to school yeah, safety part of our curriculum. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. I feel like you're asking even more specific, more talking specific. very specifically exactly. about First mm -hmm. Avenue. Well, it, First um, Avenue, but but also just general safety practices. Because I know another the other incident we had this year, um, where a student after school hours, I think mm -hmm. it was like in the sort of similar time for four thirty, was crossing coming back from St. Mary's, and they were in the crosswalk. They had the right of way, and they were struck by a car. And so just general rules like. Hey, don't start crossing until you've made eye contact with who's ever driving. So it's make sure there's mm -hmm. not you know, basic rules like that that most adults have internalized, but maybe kids have not, you know. Yeah. Because I have to say, I've been on the board for four years, and we've had three incidents that I know of where kids have been struck by cars. Yeah. So we worry about all these different things, but when it comes down to it, it's things like that that are, that are, are probably the biggest danger. Yeah. Um, and so anything we can do, I think to educate our kids. And perhaps some um, reinforcement. I think there was an incident when, uh, where a kid was struck uh, getting out of the car in front of Central and Hauser yeah. drop off. Yeah. yeah. And Sherry's daughter, you know, again, the yeah, same crosswalk. I was hit by a drunk yeah. driver, which is a totally different, totally different story. Totally different story. It was during the day. It was, it was, you know, well, and she was with the crossing guard. Right, exactly. Okay, yeah, so, so, you can't, so, yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't stop prevent that, everything, really and great. I would never um, exactly. propose to do so. But um, so, so I guess my, so it sounds like you, you draft something that sure. we, we can sign. Maybe it's probably more effective as we, yeah. we all sign yeah. it as being, you know, yeah. a yeah. 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 Absolutely. body. And, uh, and then maybe if you get back to us with some ideas on, on sort of emphasizing traffic sure. safety, especially with our younger kids, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess I, my, my only request is just sort of reading this the letter that um, Chief White put together. I mean, it's a good letter. I, I would just I would just caution us um, from sort of going to Linda's point. I mean, ideally a bridge would be best. Okay, but none of, I mean I don't want to really give any suggestions of oh, saying well what, what should we do is right. like let's look support. look for look for a solution and then. Implement it. Exactly. Yeah, we support a solution that needs to, to be. Yeah. It and needs to be implemented because right now this does, this yeah. 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 right because this letter doesn't. I don't get. I when I read the letter, I didn't get the sense that okay, look for a solution, but we're not necessarily going to implement it. We want something implemented. Right. Okay. Well, right, no, right. he says, and I'll quote because it's easier. In summary, I am requesting that the Illinois DOT fully fund safety roadway improvements at the intersection of First Avenue and Ridgewood Forest. So markings. it's yeah, a pretty involved. clear request about what we right, but then he goes down and like lists. He gives right. suggestions, right? And I, I don't want to sort of lead the discussion because so I would ideally like the no, best I, I solution. Think we're in agreement on that. We're not we're not sort of supporting specific solutions at this right. point, but that we are supporting a, a serious analysis. And, and right. Action. Well, I'd rather see. Yeah. Besides just the lights and the markings, what else could we do? Right. Um, right. Do you think there's something exactly. stronger? Exactly. Uh, so I'd also like to thank uh, the uh, Hollywood PTO leadership for bringing this issue up, uh, or not bringing it up, but also, you know, basically moving it forward, so it's very important to do that, um, so appreciate that. Um, if there are no other comments on this topic, uh, we move into uh, uh, our second uh, iteration of the Press 100 policies. Uh, so I don't know, Dan, if you want to uh, maybe uh, lead us through this section. Press 100 strikes back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, under Section 5, uh, let's see, it goes from A all the way to T. So, uh, every policy that's listed there, uh, essentially the main change is a uh, change to reference the new contract that we recently ratified with the teachers. Uh, so, no substantial changes other than that. Uh, we can read them line for line if anyone is interested. Uh, otherwise, if we go to item six, uh, there were two policies in particular that merited further discussion. One we discussed last time, that was policy 430, uh, revenue and investments. And uh, per the note, the, the original copy that we received back from uh, Press 100 did not seem to reflect the day-to-day -day realities of the district in particular with our arrangements with the uh, Proviso Township. Uh, so this policy itself was uh, drafted assistance from our attorneys and reflects uh, similar policies that other districts in a similar management arrangement have. Uh, I don't know, Martha, was there anything else you wanted to add? I would say that? perfect percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and secondly, policy 895 for parental involvement. Uh, it is striking a section that we got uh, from the IASB that uh, mentions bring your parents to school day. <laughs> Uh, promising that it would be the first Monday in October, which apparently has never happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're striking it from the 
policy for now that is that's not a practice that we do. I'm not saying that we couldn't do that in the future. Uh, I think part of those while you're mentioning that parents are welcome with uh, proper notice and clearance. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, not in mass on the first Monday in October. At least, <laughs> right. at, least, uh, at least not until we decide to act on it another week. Right. Another week. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I believe that is it for this edition of. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dan. So, does anyone have any questions for Dan or Martha about these uh, these uh, policies that uh, Dan has uh, covered for us here, or any, or any of the others that are listed? If not, then I guess we will see them again at the, the next meeting. Next meeting. Um, so, uh, I think that's it for the agenda. Next, uh, last item is public comment. Is there any public comment? Kim Quilty, do I need my address? Oh, uh, you, if you would, thank you. 8621 Parkview in Brookfield. <laughs> um, thank you for supporting the um, letter that the police chief of Riverside has written. Um, one other thing that I noticed in the letter was that Hauser was not specifically mentioned. Um, it just mentioned Hollywood students, and we do have both in both directions going back and forth. Um, so that might be something that should be added. Um, and then just one other comment. Um, I noticed all of the contracts listed on your consent agenda. And I noticed that it was indicated that merit-based pay um, could be granted to administrators. and. I think that's a wonderful idea. I noticed that the wording was very vague, um, indicating that it was up by board discretion. And Jeff, you mentioned that um, this year it was based solely on test scores. And so, or generally, you said it was based it on was based test on scores. Academic performance over several years, not just one year. Okay. Um, I was just hoping in the future there's a lot of reasons why our administrators are good and I'm hoping in the future that you guys as a board will consider compensating our very valuable administrators um, beyond the criteria of test scores and academic performance of their students. That's all. Thanks very much for your comments. Have a good one. Um, any other public comment? Mm -hmm. I'll be uh, if not, then uh, future meeting dates are April 30th, 2019, which is the biannual uh, organizational meeting where we'll have, I want to welcome our, our new board member, uh, Mr. Mayor Nolte, who is in the audience here. Um, and then we have uh, May 1st, can be the whole meeting will uh, is canceled. And the next business meeting will be May 15th, 2019, at 7 p.m. here in Hauser. Um, so if there is no further uh, business, please